So far, we have been setting our item, the flex basis of our item with specific pixel values. We tried 300 pixels, we tried 600 pixels, and we said that this is the size that the element wants to have along the main axis. Now, specific pixel values are not the only way how you can set the flex basis. As you can see here, when we click on this pixel button, we get three additional options. We are, however, only interested in the first two options. We are ignoring the initial option um, for now. All of those elements have an initial option. This is not part of the um, of the actual flex options that you might also know from, from the web world. The values that we are interested in is the percentage and the auto value. So as you might expect, when we set our element by percentage, what it does is it takes up a relative value according to its parent element. So obviously when I set it to 600%, it fills the whole container. It cannot get kind of 600%, which would mean be six times as big as your parent, because there is not as much space in the, in the containing element. But obviously when we set this to 50 and we have enough space, we cover half of, half of the, the container. Now, obviously, we have the same issue as before when we have three elements that all want to be 50%, but there is not enough space. They will not have 50% of um, the space because they they kind of take care of each other and they say, um, I have to leave space for the other elements because they have the same options as I do. They also shrink. So all of us get the same amount of space. Now let's remove them again. Um, now the percentage value most of the times is the preferred way to set sizes, sizes because it leads to a layout that is relative and flexible. That means when the containing, when the container sizes change, the elements can adjust. So when we would halve the container, then also the item would um, would would be half as big as the container. When we would increase the container size, the element would adjust. This is not the case with pixel values, obviously, because when you want to have uh, 100 pixels and there is enough space, you will always get 100 pixels, no matter how much you grow your containing element. Now, there are cases where the pixel size also makes sense. However, for example, when you need images with precise uh, sizes, and things like that when you want some, I don't know, some specific GUI elements, buttons to have a specific size to be readable, things like that. Um, then also, then you might use specific pixel sizes. Otherwise, you would probably stay, at, you would probably be best with, uh, best off with percentage values. Now, the third value is auto and this um, is totally different than the pixel and percentage values. What this does it, it is it tells the element, look at the content that you have and calculate your size according to your content. Now, since we don't have any content here, the element almost disappears. Now we have a tiny little line which comes from this text label that I put inside and the text label by default has a tiny margin, I think. That's why we are having this tiny little line. <clears throat> if we would set this text label to disappear, the container element would also shrink down to, to be invisible um, practically. So um, what happens when we put in text in here. This is an increasingly long text. Now you can see an increasingly linked text. Doesn't matter. Um, you can see the element adjusts accordingly to the, the text that is inside. So it calculates basically how big is my content and will behave according to that. Now, this is all uh, nice and easy as long as we don't have any containing elements. It gets more interesting and more tricky once those elements have to compete for the space, which we will see in the next video.